Hello again, friends. We are going to cover another deck list for Vintage Format. This time it is the Psycho Strongest $10 Hyper Budget Rush deck. Uh, one thing to note that's going to be different between this deck list and the updated version for set 1 to 5 is that we are missing only two cards. One of them is the starter, Lion at Heat, and the other one is the other Nova Grappler Critical Trigger. All of the rest of these cards did exist in the original sets that we're going to be playing with. So that means that this deck has, by and large, not changed much at all. However, because we don't have Lionette Heat, I have altered the deck list just a little bit to compensate for the fact that we're going to be running Battle Risers, both as our starter and as stand triggers within the deck. So because of the Battle Riser change, obviously we have a high-powered Riser custom, and that's going to shift a little bit about what the deck is doing and what it's trying to accomplish. So... Obviously, the premise for the deck is you never ride up to grade 3. We're not running any grade 3s. And then you attack with your Vanguard after you've rushed them down. And they have to guard because you have a lot of critical triggers. And then if they do not allow the attack to hit, well, that's where Cat Butler comes in. Cat Butler is, retire this unit. At the beginning of the close step of the battle that your Vanguard attacked, if the attack did not hit, you may pay the cost. If you do, choose one of your grade 2 or less Nova Grappler Vanguards and stand it. So Cat Butler is obviously going to put an immense amount of pressure because you get to keep restanding your Vanguard, you get to keep attacking with it again, you get to keep doing drive checks, and that's going to close out the game very, very, very well, especially if you have a standing rear guard that you can put triggers on. And whether or not you do is going to depend predominantly upon which Vanguard you have. So for this deck, there are typically two Vanguards, the first one being Brutal Jack, Brutal Jack is an 11k unit that requires you to uh, counter blast one, and if you do counter blast one, then it will lose its restraint and then be able to attack, and then it has an effect where, as Vanguard, if it gets boosted, it gets 5,000 power. So if you have a 7k boost behind Brutal Jack, you are hitting 23,000 power. That is perfect numbers to go in, to go against cross rides. The downside to Brutal Jack is that if you restand him against a cross ride, he is not going to be able to hit the Vanguard unboosted. But what you could do, in theory, is you could attack for 11k, and then they no guard, and then you hit a crit, and then they're dead. Or you attack for 11k, and then they have to guard, so then they guard it so that you can't pass. You hit a critical trigger, you put it on your Vanguard, you stand him up again. So that's kind of where that whole catch-22 of Cat Butler comes into play. The second primary Vanguard is Cup Bowler. Cup Bowler's effect is whenever your Nova Grappler becomes rest, he gains 1,000 power until the end of turn. This means that if you attack with him last, he has 14,000 base power. If you save your boost for the very last swing, then he can be uh, 13,000 base power, strong enough to hit over those cross rides, not having the same weakness as Brutal Jack, but not being able to so easily hit that 23k number um, that Brutal Jack can hit. So they each have their own pros, they each have their own cons. I love both of them. Uh, the thing that's different between this list and the other list is that now that we're running Battle Risers, we do have the High Powered Riser Custom. High Powered Riser Custom is a 16,000 base power unit if you have Battle Riser behind it. That obviously only applies during your turn. So this means that if you're up against MLB, that's a 22k row if you do swing and boost. And otherwise, it's a 16k unit that has the potential to hit a stand trigger and restand. Or you could pass triggers along to this row, and then you could be talking about potentially a 27,000 power two critical unit. So that is already pretty strong. Obviously, Battle Riser is just when it boosts, it boosts for 6k. At the end of your turn, you shuffle it into your deck, and then you have your stand trigger back. And then the tech card that I'm going to be playing that I think is going to do the absolute most for this in this particular format is Rocket Hammerman. Yes, the very avatar of my YouTube channel. Rocket Hammerman is rest this card, choose a Nova Grappler, it gets 2,000 until the end of turn. If you apply this to Cup Bowler, Cup Bowler will become 12,000 power with just this one effect. You can call over Rocket Hammerman. And then if you boost with your two side rows, now you have a 16K Cup Bowler and you can apply the boost after you're done with everything else. And if that boost is a Cat Butler, that's still 21K. Alternatively, you could apply it to a rear guard Brutal Jack and make it a 13k attacking rear guard, and then stand triggers become a lot more potent with that. You could also apply it to a high powered riser custom, give it 2000 power, and then all of a sudden it's 18,000 power. Perfect numbers against cross rides. You're seeing a theme here, I hope. And because all of these cards have the ability to hit 18k 
in conjunction with Rocket Hammerman. I have decided to run it at four when I was not running it previously. Um, I, I don't know if that's the best idea or not, but for right now, I really like the feel of it. Obviously, you have to minus for this if you call over it. And if you don't call over it, then you are weakening one row by 6K to increase another row by 2K, which is very rarely worth it. But the idea is if you're trying to go for a big final turn push and you have the extra card, Rocket Hammerman can do a lot of good. However, the reason why he wasn't run in the original build is because Rocket Hammerman is effectively just give a unit plus two or plus three K. That's what the original starter Lionette Heat was supposed to cover and that we no longer have access to. Either way, the deck is still going to play about the same. You get a high powered Vanguard up in that center row. You attack, they have to guard if they're at four. You hit a critical trigger and then you win the game. Or if they guard it, then you sack a cat butler, stand it, attack again. They have to guard it again. Sack a Cat Butler, stand it again. The obvious weakness to this deck is if you don't draw into Cat Butler, you're not doing a whole lot other than, you know, just beating the crap out of them with a gigantic powered row rush. But um, you still have quite a bit of power. But without Cat Butler, I don't think that this deck is like amazingly strong. So clearly you need to get the Cat Butlers out. You need to draw it and you need to have it consistently in order to get the most bang for your buck out of this deck. But if you played the deck before, it's going to function basically the same as it did before. Um, the only other important thing is because you're running Rocket Hammermans, you have to be a little bit careful to make sure that you still have those clay dolls and screaming and dancing and announcer shouts behind your Brutal Jack if you have them as the Vanguard to make sure that you're hitting those 23k rows. Um, other than that, I think it's pretty straightforward. I hope you enjoyed the video. Have a good one.